Putin's ultimatum, uh, ceasefire, capitulation or a lie. This is what we're gonna talk about today. Hello there, I'm Elina, welcome back to my channel Enough of Propaganda. And today it's not just about Putin's proposition for ceasefire in Ukraine, it's about everything that's gonna be update on Russia, on Ukraine, on Europe, what is happening. And exactly we're gonna talk about Putin and his uh, proposition. Also, during watching the video, I would suggest you to sit down a bit further from the screen or who knows, you might get hurt. I just don't want that to happen. So uh, please sit down further or something like that might happen to you or may not. Oops, it happened again. Sorry about that. I won't do it again. Uh, you can relax and watch the video quietly and I don't think I would do it again. Ah, sorry about that. Apparently I did it again. It kind of happens all by itself. So just, uh, but don't worry, don't worry. Now I can maybe even sign written uh, agreement that I won't do it again. Okay, I think I made you made my point. How many times you can trust person who is bluntly lying to you again and again and again. Now we can move on. This is BBC article, Putin lays out his terms for ceasefire in Ukraine, which is, you can read it, just, um, my point is that Putin's recent statements suggest a change in his tone and approach, rather than in content regarding uh, Ukraine, the war and the peace negotiations, so-called peace negotiations. And we will discuss it a little closer. We will figure out why sudden changes in Putin's rhetoric. He now kind of portrayed the Russia and the West as a uh, not so enemies, more like a partners and suggest ending the tragic pages of the war. So let's forget about the killed people, wounded people, destroyed Ukrainian cities. Let's move on. Let's give up. And if Putin previously demanded the Odessa demilitarization, now he proposes Ukraine withdrew from certain regions where Russian troops even not present in many places like that, like Zaporizhia or Kherson, Russia isn't even there. Yet Ukraine is supposed to give up their territories and cave to Russia just to stop hostilities. And these are Russian soldiers, which is now uh, fertilizing fields of Ukraine. Again, nothing new is happening here. As this post of Gabrielius Landsberger said, you don't join the Soviet Union, they invade you, send trains full of your people to prison camps, hold a fake referendum and pretend to save you from Nazis by killing you. Sound familiar? Moscow has been using the same script since the night of June 14th, 1941. Before talking about what Putin is proposing, let's look at the situation in general. Let's say a couple words about the front. I won't go too much into details, even a lot of things happened since my last video. Uh, for example, Russia tried to attack city of Kharkiv and all they could get two tiny spots on the map. They couldn't even get neither Lipsy nor Volchansk city. Uh, according to military experts at the time uh, who actually know what is happening, they basically said that most of what Russia gained in those time when Ukraine didn't have enough ammunition, thanks to president, former president of the United States Trump and his puppet Michael Johnson, both of them are puppets of Putin basically, this delayed the aid for Ukraine and that is why Ukraine lost territories. They lost Avdiivka, they had to retreat from there and these territories they lost not just because of that, mostly Russians just walk in, there should be more mines there, for example, but Ukraine has a huge territory with Russia, so it's not really easy to mine. Most of these territories easily shot from Russian territory, that is why there was no defenses there built, they built beyond Vovchansk, about there, and Russia couldn't, couldn't go there, Russia couldn't get it because basically Russia cannot take Kharkov. Every military expert with knowledge about the situation could tell that because even if Russia, only if Russia will take all the troops from everywhere, 
and throw at Kharkov, then maybe they would have had a chance. That's about it. For now, they didn't have that ability, and they stopped. Ukraine stopped them. Russian offense failed. Yes, the situation is still not good. They're still fighting. Ukrainians are still fighting. Lots of Ukrainians are dying. It's And even more Russians are dying. Every day about 1,000 people on the Russian side. And they couldn't take Kharkiv. They couldn't take Ovchansk. They couldn't take any major cities. Besides a few little tiny villages. Many of them wasn't even defended because they really couldn't defend them in these territories. Which is easily shot through from Russian territory. Uh, in the other sides of the front, not capturing of uh, the capturing of Bakhmut, the capturing of Divka, none of this brought major victories. The front has not collapsed. Russia couldn't get big territories. You can take a ruler and measure how much they captured in two years of hard fighting. Only in Avdiivka, Russia lost at least 16,000 dead. And they didn't achieve anything. To be able to take Slavyansk or Kramatorsk, for example, it will take them years, if not decades. So is the whole territories of Donetsk and Lugansk region. Russia didn't have Zaporizhia. It's controlled and always was controlled by Ukraine. The only big city Russia captured was Kherson and the, uh, Ukraine. They had to retreat from there. So now Putin wants Kherson, Zaporizhia, and all the territories what Russia doesn't have would be given to Russia on the silver platter. So Ukrainians should leave their people at mercy of Russian murderers. And this is not just an empty word. I'll show you why I'm saying not. I'm proving everything I say. So just to have a ceasefire, temporary peace, anything. Russia still keep attacking in the Kupensk region, which is near Kharkov, and in these territories. So it's all continues. And um, the help what Ukraine received from the West and will receive recent, uh, very soon, even include F-16s, and the Czech initiative uh, proposed to provide some artillery shells and so on. But even for half a year, when Ukraine didn't have enough support from the United States, didn't have enough munitions, the front didn't collapse, Ukraine didn't give up, Kharkov isn't captured, Russia achieved nothing. Whatever they achieved, like even Avdiivka, it's like what, few thousand people town. Kharkiv, it's over a million four hundred, as far as I remember. So, big cities, Russia couldn't capture. Russia couldn't achieve military goals on the front, on the ground front, let's say. Russian, um, Russians have failed to defend Crimea with the Western help and with attacks and so on. Uh, lots of strikes was on Crimea. Lots of Ukrainian, uh, Russian planes were destroyed in different places. Now some countries uh, agreed that it would be smart if Ukraine can shoot at Russian territory. Wherever those shots coming towards Kharkiv and so on, which was shot with uh, FAB bombs, gliding bombs. And that is what killed that many people. That is why Avdivka was captured, because Russians plane, Russian planes could literally fly into Ukraine and bomb places. Russia completely wiping out cities from the face of the planet. Вооруженные сил России не наносят ударов по городам Украины. Мирному населению ничего не угрожает. This is Kharkiv. This is what Russia does in Kharkiv. Look at this. Normally I don't show stuff like that, but planes are literally coming in and bombing everything into the ground. I have friends living in Kharkiv and Kharkiv region. And this is what is happening to them. Meanwhile, Kharkiv is bravely standing up against it. They're cleaning up the debris. They're trying to 
live as normal life as they can. Now I wanted to show you what is actually happening. Normally I try not to show gory details, but this is important to know. This is what Russia does to Ukraine. You cannot compare Ukraine and Russia. Ukraine doesn't do this to Russian cities. It doesn't wipe out cities from the planet. It doesn't dis destroy like Belgorod or Kursk. They steal cities. This is what this is not happening to them. Ukraine bombing military objects in those cities. And Russia itself bombing its own territories. So many bombs fell in Russian territories these days from Russian planes, which was supposed to fly into Ukraine. And it didn't happen. So, meanwhile, Ukraine destroying Russian S-400, S-300 stations. And Ukraine trying to destroy military objects. This is my point. And it cannot be compared with what Russia is doing to Ukraine. This person is saying just my apartment get bombed. Luckily, they were near the strong construction, uh, uh, strong walls, and they, they, were su they survived. But their home destroyed. Now, after Ukraine bombed several uh, S-300, S-400s, uh, the Crimea has less defense. And more strikes on Crimea will come soon. Meanwhile, some Putin's puppets, Putin's agents in Europe, like Nigel Farage, I talked about him in my video about Putin's agents in Europe, said to BBC Radio that Putin is a clever political operator. You can recognize the fact that some people are good at what they do, even if they have evil intent. He probably thinks, thanks Russian soldiers, thinks Russian soldiers are good at what they do when they murder, rape, and torture. This is just one example of it. And this is what's happening for years. This was 2014 in Slavyansk. This is uh, filmed by Vice News. When right in downtown Slavyansk, after it was liberated by Ukraine, they was finding mass graves where Russia murdered people and put them in those mass graves. Exactly what they did in Bucha, Erpen, in any other cities, Kherson, which were occupied, occupied by Russia. So it's nothing new. Russia always did it. And this is what will happen to those territories of Ukraine Putin wants. Even many of those parts of those territories he not even control. His army isn't even in Zaporizhia or Kherson. He wants to take it and this is what's gonna happen. People gonna get tortured and killed. Exactly as it happened in Slavyansk, in Bucha, in Erpen, in other places. And in Kherson itself, which was under Russian occupation until it was left by Russia and liberated by Ukraine. So Crimea is in danger. The bridge probably will have to go down very soon. And the Black Sea, basically Russian fleet had to run away from Sevastopol, had to run away from Feodosia into Russian territory. And they're afraid to show up in the Black Sea because some big chunk of the Black Sea fleet destroyed by Ukraine. Ukraine basically opened up the Black Sea for themselves to use and deliver grain. So after all that talks about grain deal and so on, and Russia broke it right the next day after they signed the deal and so on. Now Ukraine, the country without fleet, cleared up the Black Sea for themselves to deliver grain wherever they please without Russian permission about that. So Russian achievements on the front, really nicely summarized by Randy Mott. Russia has lost the war in Ukraine. It is strategic objectives has been shredded. Crimea is not safe for the Black Sea Fleet or any major military installation. NATO has been expanded by Finland and Sweden, joining. Very significant in terms of control of land and sea areas. The Russian army has been proven to be pretty much a clown show. A lot of them, but not very effective. Most of Russian professional army is pushing up sunflowers, which means they're dead on the battlefield and sunflowers are growing from them. This is my comment. Most of its modern, by Russian standards, equipment is gone. There is no prospects for Russia to conquer Ukraine at this point, And it is unclear that it can take any major city as long as Ukraine has ammunition. Russia is isolated internationally as never before. Sanctions of some form will continue as long as it occupies parts of Ukraine. The diversion of liquidity and manpower to the military will have lasting negative impacts. So Russian war aims have been no Russian war aims have been achieved. Ukraine grows stronger every month with expanded conscription. 
and more modern Western weapons. Russia can keep throwing cannon fodder into the front, but without any significant tactical impact. I completely agree with all of he, what he said. Ukraine keeps striking Russian oil refineries, and now they're striking mostly the towers, which would be very difficult uh, to rebuild, because Russia is under sanctions, and uh, to get those parts and so on, like it would be next to impossible. Russian production lo loses uh, up to 15 or 17 percent of uh, Russian capability to produce uh, oil products and stuff like that. And this is what Ukrainian is doing, and sanctions are working, and now the big new package of sanctions imposed on Russia, which is really will cripple the Russian ability to fight the war. They should have been imposed earlier, like an, uh, I'm talking about sanctions to the banks who uh, financing the companies and working with the companies who provide to Russia crucial parts for Russia will be able to fight the war and so on. I talk, I'm talking about China, and now need we need to talk about other countries which helping Russia to avoid sanctions. Like, uh, I remember watching a video about BMW, for example, when some sort of a Kyrgyzstan started to buy 800% more of BMWs and so on. And Germany knows that so many uh, Asian countries like uh, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan and so on, when they started in Georgia, for example, and Turkey, which is a NATO country, and it shouldn't help Russia, but they do. This has to stop. And sanctions now imposed really hurt Russia. Sanctions imposed on Moscow exchange, which is brought basically uh, Russia, Russian uh, ability to buy uh, and sell dollars, up to the point that Russia now using Chinese yuan as a currency, main currency. So completely Russia lie down under China. In the last few days, Russian ruble fell. Some banks were selling it for 200 rubles uh, per US dollar. And these are the lines to the exchange places where you can exchange currency. And it seems to be slightly better now, but it's going back to the USSR. The country will have huge black market of currency, and what USSR did, they made it a, it's a crime, punishing, punished by death, by uh, selling foreign currency in the USSR. And were people who were shot, to, shot dead, executed by Russian uh, Soviet state for dealing with currency. So Russia is basically going way back to, I don't know, USSR, Stone Age, whatever. The falling of the currency by itself, it's not a big deal. But whatever happening to Russian economy, it is a big deal. And this is what Russians are thinking. Our Russian ruble will be cost more than the American dollar, and Americans wouldn't have money even for bread. So keep that in mind, Americans. She's thinking you have a chips in your head. In your head. In this video you can watch yourself its interview with Russian POW, who lives in Russian outback with a lot of small children. No normal internet, no stationary gas supply, no hot water in his house, heating by prehistoric wood stove, and no ordinary toilet in the house. I was, I have a video which says about Russian uh, toilets and outer houses, you can watch that too. He just have Russian tr uh, traditional wood toilet outside home, with a hole on the pool of shit. Russia uses most of poor citizens as cannon fodder in bloody imperialistic war against Ukraine. Again, I agree, this is, uh, this is Russia. About 6 million people doesn't even have a toilet inside their house, like everybody else. You push the button and toilet works. They have to go to outhouses. Despite some poor journalists who doesn't bother to verify the facts, I can confirm that Russia has a deficit. And it's gonna be only bigger next year. They're kind of planning to make it bigger. Russian Gazprom is losing money. It's not profitable company. It has losses. And this is Gazprom, one of the biggest and supposed to be the best Russian companies. And pension fund and fund of national uh, wealth basically stolen already. P potato started to 
uh, cost about 49% more than it used to be, and so on. And stop believing in fairy tales about that Russia can mobilize as much as, as many uh, troops as possible, because Russia has a whole bunch of million people living in Russia. According to Vladimir Milov, which Russian politician, economist, and uh, public figure, he used to be a deputy of uh, Minister of uh, Energy of Russia. Basically, maximum Russia can mobilize at about less than 20 million people. Especially because a whole bunch of Russians left of the age which could be drafted into the army. Either left country, or they basically working for some important industry and they can't be drafted. They have brawn, as Russia called it, like a paper saying they can't be drafted and so on. And there is nobody to train them. All the military equipment, many of part of military equipment is already gone and Russia can't produce enough. And they don't have people who are going to train those soldiers whatsoever. Meanwhile, Ukraine can and have people who are going to train Ukrainian soldiers, include the specialists from NATO, for example, to do that. Russia doesn't have it. Yeah, they bring more cannon fodder and more of them gonna die. Thousand people a day, basically, dying in, roughly in the last few days. And a uh, huge deficit of work, working force in Russia. There are significant shortages in Russian workforce. Uh, Basically, in military industrial complex alone, 160,000 people needed. And losses on the front, and whatever Russia experienced last winter with terrible conditions and pipes bursting and this and that, it's because many people drafted into the army, many of them killed already. There is nobody to fix the pipes, basically. And all of this uh, also mentioned uh, Vladimir Milov. The last uh, G7 meeting, which is supposed to be G8, if Russia wouldn't be so stupid to start war in Ukraine and start to killing Ukrainians, um, they came up with a lot of new important things. G7 agrees 50 billion loan for Ukraine from Russian assets. To use frozen Russian assets basically to raise 50 billion for Ukraine to help it fight invading Russian forces. So... And sanctions, as I said, will be increased and targeting uh, companies who is uh, supporting Russia and helping Russia to fight, keep fighting this war. As to elections to European parliaments, I think Anne Applebaum would explain it better. There is a video, I'll give you the link. Uh, basically, ultra-right parties and all the Putin supporters didn't get as much support as it was expected and possibly could happen. And... Uh, so Putin, Putin's support isn't what Putin thought. Nevertheless, he is trying to appeal by his speech and by his so-called proposition of the ceasefire and so on to those people. He's trying to talk to Farage, to Le Pen, to everybody of any importance, and especially Putin's hope for Trump is very big, that Trump will get elected. But... I hope American people are smarter than that. We will see. You are welcome to watch this video. In general, in my opinion, the shift happens. The Europe and the United States and some other NATO countries basically uh, started to think in the long term, preparing for a long term war and getting ready to support Ukraine in a long time. That is why Putin is also scared and nervous. That is why a Russian's chances are going down. Russian economy is in bad shape and Putin has nothing to hope for. All Putin can do is just keep threatening with the nukes, keep threatening with everything else. Just hope that somebody will get scared and give up. This article of Moscow Times said more than half of Russians ready to World War whatever number and hope to win from the, US, from the USA. They believe in that world war is gonna happen. In general, Putin can't stop the war. They already they rebuilt, um, basically moved the economy towards, basically on the military rails, 
trying to make a war economy out of the country. Right now, some low lives who never seen money in their hands consider themselves a heroes. They released from jail because of their they were in jail because of the rape, multiple murder, and so on. Now they released and they are heroes of the special military operation. Many poor Russians who never seen money in their hands now started to receive a big chunk of money just because their relatives go into war. And economy in such a bad shape that Putin can't stop the war or he will lose the power. That is why anything he says about possibly stopping the war is a lie. He can't stay in power because Russian economy can't handle it. All Putin can do and Putin's supporters is to threaten the world. And no Putin supporters, no North Korea, Iran, they basically too busy with their own problems. And definitely not China, because China doesn't build anything in Russia. Nothing they do for Russia economically, like creating jobs, building factories, nothing of that is happening. The program of changing uh, foreign companies and foreign components for Russian pro produced in Russia failed completely. And Russian economy is in really, really bad shape. This is what I was telling you before, and that's as I'm telling you now. And this is where Russia stands at this point in time. This is why I spend that much time talking about the whole situation. In this situation, it sounds like Putin is proposing some sort of a peace plan. Just at the time when peace summit is supposed to happen, and he's trying to drag attention from that by demanding the entire Donetsk, Lugansk, Zaporizhzhia and Kherson regions given away to Russia. And according to Maria Abdeva, the good question, isn't that the definition of war of aggression? So now he's talking about give me the territories or else. Let's see what Putin has to say himself. Не входит оккупация украинских территорий. Мы никому и ничего не собираемся навязывать силой. Появление российских войск под Киевом и у других городов Украины связано не с намерением оккупировать эту страну. У нас нет такой цели. Что касается длительного процесса результатов и свод, ну, конечно, это длительный процесс, может быть, так, но потом вы значит, упомянули о том, что появились новые территории. Ну вот, и такой все-таки значимый результат для, для России. Попытка побудить нас отказаться от тех завоеваний, которые мы реализовали за последние там, полтора года. Но это невозможно. Все понимают, что это невозможно. This is Ukrainian blogger operator Starsky. This is what he has to say. And there's another question. Can Putin be trusted? Historical photos of 2003 show him signing a memorandum which recognized the Ukrainian borders, including Crimea. Unfortunately, no video survived uh, showing this very event. But I remember our little experiment. This is what Operator Starsky provided in his video. Uh, lots of footage of Putin. Uh, I have many of it myself on my in my own videos. It just he put it all nicely together, so I'll just show you what he uh, showed. Крым не является никакой спорной территорией. Там не было никакого этнического конфликта в отличие от конфликта между Южной Осетией и Грузией. И Россия давно признала uh, границы сегодняшней Украины. Это были российские солдаты или нет? Это были местные uh, силы самообороны. За спиной. Сил самообороны Крыма, конечно, встали э, наши военнослужащие, они действовали очень корректно. Это, это факт, мы никогда его не скрывали. Наши вооруженные силы, прямо скажем, блокировали вооруженные силы Украины, расквартированные в Крыму. Крым – это часть украинского государства. И мы не, не можем вмешиваться во внутренние дела другой страны. Россия проводит миролюбивую внешнюю политику. Мы всегда уважали территориальную целостность украинской державы. В наши планы не входит оккупация украинских территорий. Мы никому и ничего не собираемся навязывать силой. Появление российских войск под Киевом и у других городов Украины связано не с намерением оккупировать эту страну. У нас нет такой цели.
I agree with Operator Starsky on all of this. Putin cannot be trusted. There is no agreement Putin didn't broke and violate. And I have plenty of footage of that. And Putin himself saying that Ukraine is an independent country and have to has the rights to choose the alliances, which is in my video about truth and lies about NATO. You're welcome to see it from Putin himself saying all of this. I think this footage of his plenty is enough to show that when person keep lying and lying and lying to you again, it, he can't be trusted. And besides, Putin not even legitimate leader of Russia. He is a usurper. He is not legitimate president of Russian Federation and none of his government is legitimate. That is why they can't even sign anything, even if they really wanted to. At the same time, all of his talks is just to bring more troops, have this temporarily ceasefire, and I have the whole video saying about Russian ceasefires. In this video, I prove beyond any doubts that nobody could trust Russian ceasefire, even if there would be ceasefire, let alone lasting peace. So Putin is lying again, big surprise. Partly to distract the world from the peace summit which is gonna happen, and Russia isn't invited there. Partly because he needs a ceasefire, temporary ceasefire, just to bring more troops and prepare troops, Russian troops, bring more troops to Ukraine and eventually kill more people, Russians and Ukrainians, in Ukraine. You're welcome to write me in the comments what do you think. This man is Andrei Belousov, who replaced Shaigu as a minister of defense, who's supposed to be the genius economist. Basically, Russia is changing whole economy onto military economy. There is no signs saying that Russia wants to stop the war. There is no moving troops away from the war line. There is no moving equipment away. On the contrary, the rhetoric of Russia getting more and more strong. Russia keeps threatening the world with nukes. Russia keeps pushing the future advances. They're trying to go after islands on the border with some European NATO countries like Estonia or some Baltic countries and so on. They keep pushing an Arctic. They keep being aggressive. There is no signs showing that Russia gonna slow down with that, that Russia gonna stop fighting and want to finish the war and give lasting peace to Ukraine and to Russia. So the question is, even if the capitulation of Ukraine will happen, because this is not a war, this is not a negotiation, this is the ultimatum about capitulation. It happens and it brings sometimes peace in some countries, but for that there are guarantees. There is no guarantees that Russia will not attack Ukraine again. Zero. On the contrary, by forbidding Ukraine to independent country of Ukraine to join NATO, Russia is proving that they're gonna attack Ukraine again. And if Russia didn't lose the war, who is going to pay for destruction of Ukraine? Who will pay for wiped out Ukrainian cities? Russia will not lose the war. Russia isn't going to pay. Who is going to rebuild all of this? Where are the guarantees for Ukraine? What Ukraine will get out of this deal, so-called deal? What? There is no guarantees that Ukraine not going to be attacked again. Ukraine going to be basically, the only choices for Ukraine is either join NATO to be safe or get a nuke. Because Russia will attack again. Russia already had Crimea. Russia annexed it in 2014. Russia already had two pieces in Donbass, which they didn't want to annex because they wanted to be open source on the body of Ukraine, so Ukraine cannot join NATO, for example. Did it stop Putin from attack Ukraine in 2022? No, it did not. Again, Putin lied and said everybody crazy and paranoid. They're not gonna attack Ukraine, and they did. In this my video, Naked Little King, the ISW calls Putin's bluff. I showed you what hopes Putin can possibly have. There are two ways what Putin can hope for. One is to divide Ukrainian people, see the discord among them, make them be distrustful to their government, hate their president, hate, hate their government. And in this video, Massive Kremlin Disinformation Campaign, I showed exactly how it was done. 
how that program works, what tools they use to make it happen, just to make Ukrainians stop fighting. That is why they bombing Kharkiv with the FAB bombs, with the gliding bombs, basically to make people, to give the terror attacks on Ukrainian people, bombing to the ground their malls, bombing to the infrastructure to supply heat and electricity to Ukrainian people, to make Ukrainian people grab the government by the hands and say, please, please sign anything with Putin just to make it stop. And another one is to make Western countries stop supporting Ukraine by lying about Ukraine, by showing that lying that Ukraine is losing and there is no point to support them and so on. So you can watch it in this video if you like more closely. This is Putin's only hope. Let's not him win because the only lasting peace to Ukraine is possible when Ukraine will get all the ammunition they need and win this war, push Russians out of their territories and join NATO. This is the only way to have real lasting peace in Ukraine. Unfortunately, there is no other way. So don't trust Putin ever. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Learn the truth and stay informed. Don't let Russian propaganda fool you. Thank <laughs> you.